suffering from the U.S. health disadvantage. And five key factors play a role. Number one are public policies and spending. Number two, social and economic factors like income, education, incarceration. And you heard the story earlier. Surgeon General of the United States, standing next to the president, the most powerful man in the world. Meanwhile, my brother's sitting in a jail cell due to crimes he committed to support his addiction. He didn't get treatment, he got a jail cell. The US leads the world in incarceration. And guess what? When people are in jail, they can't be part of the workforce. Uh, racism, we gotta call it what it is. Uh, this is a part, this is a significant part of our US health disadvantage. And again, we're at an educational institution. Uh, uh, former Surgeon General Jocelyn Elvis, quick funny story about her. So, though, most of you all won't know her, but um, she was the first African-American Surgeon General. I was the second male um, African-American African Surgeon General. She was the first African-American Surgeon General, period, point blank. Um, and the first female Surgeon General. And uh, she famously got fired by Bill Clinton because she said, students need to be uh, taught about masturbation at an early age, need sex ed. She was, a, she was a pediatrician, and she believed in sex ed for young people. And so um, uh, I was on a panel with her a couple of years ago, and they asked her, um, what advice would you give Dr. Adams as, as he goes through his tenure as Surgeon General? And she said, she said, I wouldn't tell him a damn thing. She goes, did you all forget I got fired? <laughs> and, and, and so I, I never forget that story. I'll also never forget that because she got fired by Bill Clinton, she's the only Surgeon General to be featured on Saturday Night Live. I thought it was close there for me for a bit. They, they had found you on there, and I was like, I don't want to be on there. My kids, my kids were hoping I'd be on there. I was like, no, because if you're on Saturday Night Live, they're usually making fun of you. They're laughing at you, not with you. But I bring her up because she famously said over and over again, you can't be healthy if you're not educated, and you can't be educated if you're not healthy. So again, education is one of these big factors. Social and physical conditions, as we talked about. Housing, transportation, uh, parks, libraries. Think about COVID. Think about telling someone, you just tested positive for COVID. You need to go home and quarantine or isolate. What does that mean if you don't take the next step and ask them where they live, if they have a home to go home to? And if that home is a crowded, place where they've got two bedrooms and 10 people and they're sharing a single bathroom. What does isolation mean there? It means nothing. It means you just sent that person home to expose the other 11 people they're living with to COVID and that they're all going to get COVID. Individual behaviors, again, are important with the caveat that the choices we make are dependent on the choices we have. And access to healthcare. Quality, coordination, access, equity. So access to healthcare. How many of you all think we have the best healthcare in the world? Not a single one of you? Well, I challenge you on that. I challenge you on that. If you had cancer, my wife actually had metastatic melanoma. Is there any place in the world you'd rather go? Would you want to be treated? And no, no offense to any countries whatsoever. Would you want to go to Africa to be treated for your cancer instead of being treated right here in New York, in the United States? Would you want to go uh, to, to any other country in the world to be treated for your cancer? No, we have the best health care here at, 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 in the world. People fly from every other country in the world to come here and go to Mayo Clinic, and to go to Cleveland Clinic, and to go to Johns Hopkins. But what we have is incredibly inequitable access to health care. Not everyone is able to access that high quality health care. And it's an important distinction. It's an important distinction when you're having a conversation on these topics. So, um, Look at another way, there are seven vital conditions that are necessary for consistent health and well-being. A thriving natural world. We need to protect our environment. Basic needs for health and safety. Far too many people, like I said, that little girl who lives down the street from us, who can't go out and ride her bike because the neighborhood is too dangerous so they don't have complete sidewalks. Um, lifelong learning is an important part of Jocelyn Elder's highlights. Meaningful work and, and, uh, and wealth. In the United States especially, we define ourselves by our career. When adults meet each other, the first thing they say is, what do you do? We define ourselves by our career. So you need to have not just work, but meaningful work and wealth. To be healthy, to be proud, to be psychologically and emotionally healthy. Humane housing, which I talked about. Reliable transportation. Because again, what good is that insurance card if you can't get to your doctor's office? And then belonging and civic muscle are the seven vital conditions. 
By making the case for community health as a pathway to economic prosperity, we foster investment in communities that raises and sustains our collective prosperity. We're going to translate it for you all in terms that you understand hashtag health as well. <laughs> you know, I was lucky. I was lucky the health consequences I faced from working in the tobacco fields didn't prevent me from ultimately pursuing my dreams. But not everyone who sacrifices their health and safety for economic reasons is so lucky. I often wonder what happened to Johnny and Megan after I last saw them in my operating room. But I invite you to join me in imagining a future where Johnny doesn't have to go back to the streets because there's workforce training programs, community resilience programs, mental health integrated into his care to help him pursue a different pathway. Where Mary can live in a smoke-free environment and be a healthy model employee who supports her family and her community instead of being in the hospital over and over and over again. And where a kid from rural Maryland doesn't end up in the hospital or supporting an industry that kills his own grandfather for one of a new pair of sneakers. I invite you all to help me create a future where communities are built so people can more easily make healthy choices and where businesses invest in communities as a way of achieving a healthier workforce and a healthier bottom line. And uh, there's never been a better time to do it. I know it's a scary time. The world seems like it's going to hell in a handbasket right now. But the fact is, the biggest changes we've had in health policy in our history have come during times of war. When you look at advances in, in uh, transfusion therapy after World War I, when you look at increases in antibiotic usage, and all we learned about that after World War II, increases in trauma care after the Gulf War, um, most of Europe adopted universal health coverage after World War II. That was the impetus for them to adopt uh, policies of universal health coverage. You were at a time that, that many of us who are older have never had in our lives. You're reaching your prime. Any of you read the book Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell? He talks about hitting that sweet spot. And some people are just fan, they're, they're tremendously talented, but they don't hit that sweet spot in terms of what's going on in the rest of the world. And they just never become famous. They never, they never make, make a big impact. And uh, some people are mediocre, but they just are in the right place at the right time. And uh, I want you all to know, you're at a time when there will be seismic shifts. There already have been, and there will continue to be in the way that we deliver health and health care for the next several decades. So be excited about the opportunities that are in front of you.